Okay, so here we have the last of the electromagnetic lectures uh, before we go to uh, applications and case histories. And uh, this is um, for, with uh, a, a little lecture on ground probing radar, which is the, uh, the only uh, differential geophysical technique other than uh, seismic reflection. And you'll see that this is uh, GPR, as it's known, is um, essentially electromagnetic reflection instead of seismic reflection. Now this um, section here gives you a sense of uh, uh, what uh, GPR results are like. You have um, uh, a horizontal scale, just like in a seismic section, okay, across the top, and then a vertical scale, which uh, is intrinsically, uh, just like with seismic, it's uh, time. But notice that the time here is in nanoseconds. It's not in uh, milliseconds. Okay, so uh, you know the travel times are a millionth. You know, ten to the six, uh, what the, uh, ten to the minus six, what they are um, in the uh, in the seismic case. Uh, these depths here are uh, uh, derived from an assumption of uh, what the uh, um, the electromagnetic wave velocity is in the ground. Okay, so here's a very typical, uh, 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 very typical uh, radar setup. Uh, this one is uh, unshielded. It's out of the uh, the, Burger, the Burger Book, and uh, you can see they're making their way across a sidewalk, um, and that's uh, a good thing to have a nice even surface to do your GPR on. Um, and notice that there uh, there aren't any uh, you know large metal objects nearby, uh, fence posts or uh, uh, or buildings. Uh, those uh, will definitely uh, impact an unshielded uh, radar setup. Uh, one of the paddles that's resting against the ground is a uh, is the transmitting antenna uh, for the radar, and the other one uh, I don't know which one, but uh, the other one is the receiving antenna, the receiver. And they have these electronics boxes here and then a, uh, a fiber optic link to make sure that, um, you know, very, very accurate time, I mean, right, it has to be, it has to be uh, um, accurate to the nanosecond, right, the transmitted time, uh, the, the, tr the time of the transmitted pulse, right, the source pulse has to be accurate, not just to the millisecond like in seismic, but to the nanosecond. Okay, so um, that's uh, that's a basic radar setup, um, and uh, if you look at a you know more successful uh, radar survey, it'll be uh, shrouded and um, and shielded, so you won't be able to see the individual antennas. Two antennas; these are probably uh, uh, relatively high f uh, high frequency antennas, maybe uh, one gigahertz. Um, and this is a survey that's probably looking at the, the gravel underneath the uh, concrete slab and uh, at the concrete itself. So here's an example of um, what you can get. Uh, I, I believe these are in the same location, uh, given um, the, uh, uh, the different uh, frequencies of antennas. Um, a uh, relatively low frequency antenna would be, say, uh, 100 megahertz. Okay. And you see that you've got a fairly, uh, you know, long, longer period, right? There's about uh, one cycle for every uh, 20 or, or 30 nanoseconds there, um, and uh, the depth scale is the same, and the time scale is the same in all of these. Uh, the location is the same. These are comparative studies. So switching to a medium frequency antenna, maybe a 500 megahertz antenna, um, the uh, the frequency goes up. The uh, the uh, length scale um, or the uh, uh, the period uh, increase uh, goes down, decreases. Right, the waves are tighter. We're seeing the uh, stratigraphy that's coming up toward the uh, surface here is eroded at the surface. Uh, we're seeing that in in um, uh, in greater detail. Um, but uh, there is a penalty for going higher frequency in greater detail. You'll notice that. You know, below 25 meters, uh, there's really no reflections to be seen, and uh, 
the uh, this is a, a penalty very much like the uh, seismic penalty, where um, your uh, uh, the higher the frequency that you try to use, the the more it uh, dissipates with every well, it dissipates a certain amount with every cycle. In this case, to ohmic losses instead of to seismic Q, and so those ohmic losses uh, add up, and uh, and you only get a certain number of cycles essentially before you lose your uh, energy from the transmitter. So, uh, uh, and then uh, if we go to an even higher frequency antenna, you can see that uh, really we don't see anything below 15 to 20 meters. Um, you know, again, more detail. You know, maybe that's helping, maybe that's not in this particular location. But um, the, uh, uh, the, the loss of depth penetration is, uh, is more, uh, even more severe. Now these are fairly uh, uh, deeply penetrating um, um, radar surveys here, uh, going down to more than 10 meters. Uh, if you have uh, conductive ground, uh, such as wet, clay-rich ground, then you're going to see uh, uh, you're going to see much less uh, uh, depth penetration. You know, you may have, uh, you know, uh, with uh, higher conductivity, you'll get uh, higher ohmic losses uh, because more current will be uh, uh, will be taken into the ground, and uh, and that's going to generate uh, uh, and that's that's going to going to leave you with uh, maybe just even five meters of, of depth penetration. So this, uh, you know, relatively high frequency means uh, about one gigahertz, which is uh, getting to be similar to your uh, cell phone frequencies and uh, Wi-Fi frequencies, etc. Okay, so um, you know, given that we have uh, the ability to put uh, uh, transmitting and receiving antennas uh, either close to each other, you know, in the uh, about a half meter apart, as you saw in that that example, or much further in a, more, you know, any offset you want, depending on how much uh, fiber optic cable you have, um, then you can uh, <clears throat> uh, you can do either pure profiling experiments, uh, you know, where you put the source and receiver close together or at some ideal distance, and you uh, you just take that combination across the surface of the ground, or uh, uh, you can sound at a at a certain midpoint. So right here is an example of a, a midpoint being occupied by uh, uh, several different uh, near to uh, farther uh, uh, offsets, uh, you know, distances between the, the source and the, uh, the, the transmitter and the receiver in this case. So uh, you can do a, uh, if you're doing a pure sounding experiment, uh, much like, a, uh, you know, this would be called a, uh, I, I don't know of any, uh, any radar rigs that use uh, um, radar rigs that use uh, um, uh, more than one uh, receiver? It certainly would be possible. Uh, I think it's just too expensive. Um, you don't have to plant geophones, right? You don't even need ground ground contacts. So you could do radar from an airplane and get a synthetic uh, aperture or synthetic offset that way, right? Because the uh, transmitter is going to and uh, the receiver is going to fly uh, a certain distance before the uh, the reflected wave hits it, right after after it's transmitted and then reflected off the ground. But anyway, um, here is the example of what's called a walk away experiment. You hold the transmitter in the same place and you and you walk away, and you've got a uh, a shallow layer with uh, you know uh, electromagnetic wave velocity v1, and down below that a uh, a deeper layer. And an interface uh, at depth H, which has electromagnetic, and below that is electromagnetic velocity v2. And uh, unlike with uh, seismic refraction, we don't really care here uh, whether uh, v1 is greater than or less than uh, v2. We can still do the experiment, just like in seismic reflection. So here's what you uh, usually get. Okay, as we open up the uh, offset, uh, you know, uh, transmitter to receiver. Uh, offset distance from uh, zero to uh, you know several meters, and we look uh, you know down to about 200 nanoseconds uh, travel time. We'll see a wave uh, that comes through the air um, to the uh, to the receiver, and of course uh, uh, you know 
the speed of light is maximum in a vacuum and less in a uh, uh, in rock or or it's a little bit less in air than in, than in a vacuum but it's a lot less in rock or uh, uh, or soil you know according to the uh, overall index of refraction of all the minerals so uh, it's light of course uh, you know just at a lower frequency than uh, visible light than the kind of light you use in a microscope so the air wave is going to be the fastest thing because that's uh, you know air is pretty close to vacuum and so the speed of sound the uh, speed of light in, in electromagnetic waves in air is uh, fastest of all and then you get a direct wave through the rock okay which is going to be slower you know maybe half the speed of the uh, uh, of the uh, uh, of the air wave and uh, and then you'll get reflections so here's a reflection that has a minimum two-way travel time of, uh, say, 120 uh, nanoseconds, and it's uh, going to be uh, asymptotic to the direct wave, not the air wave. If it's asymptotic to the air wave, that means it's, uh, it's, propagating, above, uh, it's propagating above ground, and that's not what we're interested in. So here's a real data example, okay? and these uh, are the uh, uh, velocities that have been picked uh, from this, uh, this uh, walkaway experiment, which looks a lot like a seismic shot gather. So you can see uh, the, the air wave with a uh, velocity of C, which turns out to be right about uh, 0.3 uh, meters per nanosecond. And then uh, there's a velocity uh, of less than half that uh, uh, going through the ground down below. And then you can see some reflections in here on the left side and on the lower part that are asymptotic to the uh, uh, they're asymptotic to the uh, uh, the ground wave, not the air wave. Now, this is kind of a nice situation because um, your uh, hyperbolic reflections, you know, the uh, air wave is not involved. It's not in the wave. You know, in seismic, the air wave is cutting right through across the reflections, but that's that doesn't happen, uh, never happens with uh, GPR. So, uh, you know, that's a it gives you some hope of getting some very good data with uh, GPR. And here it is, a uh, you know, very similar uh, uh, data set plotted in uh, variable density, the way ViewMat would plot it. And in fact, you can plot uh, GPR data in uh, ViewMat and with OpenDetect and all these, all these tools we use for seismic reflection. So um, you can see the air wave, which forms the first arrival, but that's not very interesting. Notice that there's waves that follow the air wave that are parallel to it. Well, those must be uh, you know, reverberations or, uh, you know, complex uh, nature of the, of the source signal, uh, you know, not entirely compensated for in the, in the transmitter receiver. Uh, and being parallel to the air wave, you know, we have to, we know we have to ignore them. And then here's the ground wave cutting through at a, at a much slower velocity. And then we can see uh, various reflected waves, uh, especially this shallow one, you know, that has a minimum time about, it uh, uh, looks like 30, uh, uh, nanoseconds. Uh, no, yeah, it's about 30 nanoseconds. So, uh, uh, and they're all asymptotic to the uh, uh, to the ground wave. Okay, with the, so just a slightly different uh, geometry than you get in uh, in seismic reflection, um, and still uh, uh, same concept with the uh, hyperbolic shaped, uh, you know, curved reflections that have. Uh, you know, normal move out essentially to the same seismic normal move out equation. So there's a lot of tricks you can play uh, with uh, with radar. Um, you know, it's easy to put down a borehole because um, you don't need uh, you don't need to clamp the geophone in the borehole or anything fancy like that. Uh, you know, the electromagnetic energy will get to it uh, one way or another. Uh, you know, you don't need direct ground contact. Uh, much easier to do than. Uh, cross hole uh, electrical resistivity. Um, you know, it's really just uh, translumination with radio waves. Um, now you do want to make sure that uh, the skin depth is large enough for you. So you might, uh, you might go to using a, uh, you know, especially if you have uh, conductive uh, ground, uh, you know, between your uh, boreholes, you might, uh, you might well uh, use uh, the lowest uh, frequency radar you can. And, uh, so you just uh, put the, uh, the transmitter at various uh, levels uh, and, and often the receiver is at the same level. Uh, so you, 
what actually happens is you start at the bottom and then you pull them both up together, and that will uh, that'll get you uh, um, <clears throat> that'll get you a basic image uh, that should uh, be sensitive to voids and tunnels and you know crosshole radar is uh, a national security uh, uh, technique um, you know a good way of looking for uh, voids tunnels and uh, other threats uh, across borders. Um, now, uh, this uh, diagram here is this cross section is suggesting uh, uh, more of a tomography experiment. So, you uh, position the receiver, I'm sorry, the transmitter at one depth, and then you uh, you survey the you know the radar signal to uh, all the depths in the other hole. And so you can get a lot of you know then you then you go to the next transmitter depth and you got to resurvey the whole the entire uh, receiver hole. So doing that, you get lots of crossing rays, and uh, you can do a, a tomographic inversion, um, which is uh, really nothing more than a, a big least square solution, uh, not even a very uh, very complicated one, and you can end up end up with a uh, uh, an image like this, uh, where we're looking at uh, uh, at radar velocity, okay. Which is correlated with uh, conductivity. It's correlated with uh, uh, the density of the rocks and all that. So, um, where you have, uh, you know, in this in this case, uh, these boreholes are in a limestone terrain, a karst terrain. So the karstic areas that have silty sand, um, you know, they have higher conductivity and and lower radar velocity. Uh, and this is uh, the velocities given here are in meters per microsecond. Okay. So 50 to 70 there, and um, uh, and then the dark areas uh, uh, from this tomographic section are uh, are higher uh, radar velocity. And here's the bottom of the section, and as you go deeper, you get higher radar velocities as you get into the you know solid, unfractured, un, un uh, weathered limestone. You know, uh, you get uh, up to uh, 9,200 uh, meters per microsecond because uh, you know lime. Unweathered limestone, unfractured limestone, ought to be a pretty good, uh, uh, a pretty good uh, uh, in, uh, insulator, and so it'll have a higher radar velocity. And there's the velocity scale. And you can see these boreholes are only, uh, uh, you know, 15 meters apart. Um, and that's, you know, these that's kind of the smaller scale you have to work with uh, in uh, with radar as a compared to seismic, you know. Uh, I'd say in general, radar has uh, you know depth and distance sensitivity, which is uh, maybe one tenth of what's possible with seismic. Uh, but likewise, it has uh, uh, you know a ten times the resolution of, of seismic in, in many cases. So that's uh, those are important considerations. Now here's um, why most radars are used. Uh, they're used for locating pipes. You know, a pipe is a void uh, or or uh, if it's a, if it's a, well, if it's a, say a, a plastic sewer pipe, okay, it's just a, it's just a void full of air, and so that'll generate a strong diffraction. And just like in seismic, the, uh, this is a pure profiling uh, survey here, right? So this is a, just a, uh, a zero offset uh, section, and uh, uh, and in, in pure profiling, you get a, a strong diffraction at a, at a, at a void in, with radar. Uh, you can see some of the, uh, you know, layering. Uh, probably, uh, you know, the depth the street is dug down to, and maybe the uh, the top of the water table, um, you know, several meters down. In this uh, in this case. Uh, now the other thing, uh, you certainly will get strong uh, diffractions from metal pipes, you know, aluminum or steel, uh, just because they're so much more uh, conductive. So either way. Um, you know, pipe, tunnel, void. Um, you know, doesn't matter what kind of pipe you can detect them with this, uh, uh, with with pretty easily with a radar survey. So that uh, uh, that's the motivation a lot of uh, a lot of folks have who use radars regularly. So um, here's an example of a pure uh, profiling survey. We maintain the same distance between the transmitter and the receiver, and we move that combination across the ground. And uh, you know when you're away from the anomalous zone, the void, say the pipe, then you um, you know you're looking at it sideways, 
and then you're always getting uh, uh, hopefully a reflection from the the soil to bedrock interface. So then you plot those up and you see the diffraction in the uh, time versus distance plot, uh, profile distance plot. Okay, this is a pure profiling survey, so the offset is constant. And here's um, uh, some results. Uh, as you as you might imagine, uh, surveying with radar is really quick. So uh, basically, you can just uh, roll over the surface uh, with a little cart that has the antennas uh, attached to it, and uh, very quickly map out the subsurface. Uh, uh, here, the map is is uh, given in terms of conductivity, millisiemens per meter. Uh, but uh, there are other things that could be derived. You know, depth. Uh, you could you could plot radar velocity uh, itself. Uh, you know, depending on what your objective is. Here's a, a, a map at a deeper depth, okay? So that map was at a, at a shallow depth where we have uh, um, uh, higher uh, conductivities. And then we go to a deeper depth, we have lower conductivities, and uh, we see those. Uh, but a lot of the, uh, you know, there's persistent features that uh, uh, show us that some of what, you know, a lot of what we're seeing is, uh, is correct. Right, so like this uh, bullseye anomaly here, strong as it is, you know, doesn't persist at the greater depth, and so uh, you know is either uh, an artifact or something very shallow. Okay, now um, another thing that's different from seismic is uh, the fact that we have a very strong impedance mismatch at the ground surface. Right, the air is, uh, you know, it's got uh, more than twice the velocity of the of the ground. And uh, it's uh, it's a almost a perfect insulator, whereas the uh, the ground is uh, really quite conductive by comparison. So really, and this is why you need to shield uh, radars so well. Um, the uh, most of the of the transmitting transmitted energy is reflected right back uh, from the the surface of the ground, right? Because the uh, the antenna is up, uh, you know, at least an inch or so above the ground. And uh, and so if the ground is rough, you know those. Uh, and here uh, is an example from uh, a radar survey that was done across some furrows in a in a plowed field. And so wherever we are across the center of a furrow, the uh, the sort of dish shape of the furrow in cross section, you know that that acts as a as a as a reflector, and it, it also uh, bends the uh, uh, bends the the radar uh, rays and waves. And uh, you know causes these higher amplitudes. You know it's not anything in the subsurface; it's purely in the in, at the at the, the surface of the ground. Uh, and you know where we have uh, strong uh, uh, interfaces in uh, seismic, we can see you know, similar kinds of focusing effects, but uh, uh, rarely at the ground surface. It's just an example here of a. Uh, an outcrop scale uh, study uh, in a uh, mining pit. So we have a mineralized uh, vein which uh, is cutting across the uh, original stratigraphy. Lots of um, you know uh, discontinuities uh, you know near the surface and at the pit floor. And here's a radar survey from uh, uh, above of the mine bench above. And you can see um, where uh, the uh, you know, basically the, the termination, the differing attitude of the uh, of the reflections, uh, you know, in the uh, uh, in the ore zone uh, uh, pointed out to you. Um, here's uh, lastly now uh, just a few examples um, of um, of sur you know surveys that uh, can work really well with radar. Um, at the upper left is a survey across a glacier, and uh, uh, the ice is a perfect insulator, uh, at least if it's winter, and so the uh, uh, the radar signal uh, basically bounces off the uh, bottom of the ice as if uh, it was uh, the ground surface, uh, which it kind of is. So, uh, you know, radar has been long been used for uh, studies of uh, glacier bases and the processes and melting and, and sediment transport that's going on there. Um, We've got a, a survey showing a void in karst. Okay, you can see that there's lots of diffractions in it uh, down below on the left, and um, uh, 
so uh, every diffraction is probably a little uh, sinkhole there that's uh, uh, coming out. And, uh, and we can see that uh, kind of this blank zone uh, in here with the diffractions at the edge of it. Uh, good, uh, good sense that we can, we're seeing a cavity there. Uh, these other two are kind of, uh, you know, looking for uh, soil to bedrock interfaces. Uh, you know, here's a case where there's a lot of diffractions, but, uh, you know, it's kind of muddy data, but there is a strong reflector, and so that uh, shows you right away uh, what's going on. Uh, in this case here, you know, what is all this, what are all these horizontal lines through it? You know, it looks like ruled notebook paper. Uh, well, what's going on there is uh, what you've got is uh, a... Uh, uh, a complex uh, uh, source wavelet, which uh, you know, the processing in the transmitter and the receiver isn't entirely getting rid of it, especially because we're having to, you know, greatly boost up the amplitude of the uh, reflections, and so um, uh, it's those uh, it's those uh, reflections at uh, at uh, 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 you know that are very weak. Um, and uh, fortunately, we can we can just barely see them through the uh, um, through all the noise uh, that comes from the source itself. Uh, you know, it's really related to the uh, uh, the the transmitted pulse, which you can see right here at the at the ground surface, and uh, and and the fact that uh, you know the horizontal lines are all parallel to that is uh, is the first clue that what you have to look for is uh, is not horizontal lines. Okay. Well, that's it for a quick uh, radar lecture, and uh, uh, we're going to look at uh, mostly hydrological uh, case histories uh, uh, later on in the week.